So here's a problem that I've been thinking about. Um, some games that use these miniatures that you play on a grid of squares do not allow diagonal movement. <clears throat> so what you get is this. This is your starting point here. And these around the outside represent the maximum that you could move if you for if you were allowed to move four squares so he could go one two three four or he could go one two three four or one two three four diagonal movements not allowed now you end up with this fairly unnatural looking result a square he can he can he can end up in any of these areas which um is defined by this square Whereas in a natural situation, you'd expect him to be the centre of a circle with him able to move the length of the radius. But you can't do that with um, a square grid. So well, what a lot of games do, I uh, know that um, is they allow diagonal movement. And what you end up with is this sort of shape. Okay, let's move a little more. It's maybe makes the game a little more fluid. Makes the game makes the movement a bit more sort of uh, free flowing. Maybe, but you still end up with a square. So it's still not very natural. So, so I mean, I'm just going to give you a couple of examples. Diagonal movement allowed, you can go one, two, three, four, or you can go one, two, three, four. Okay. Still not very still not a circle that you would expect in a sort of a natural, a naturalistic situation. So this is what I decided is would be a good rule. For every four squares you move along one of the cardinal axes, one, two, three, four, you can sacrifice one of those squares, and then you get two squares of movement off to the side so the, the, you, you're, uh, you don't have to take both of those two squares but you've got them there if you want them so this is the shape you end up with now grab a few more models a little bit more naturalistic it's closer to being a circle which is what you want so his, his moves are one two three four okay and he can also go one two three four but he can actually by by sacrificing one of his move squares along the cardinal he can gain two this way so for every four squares he moves that way he can so if you moved eight squares that way he would be able to sacrifice two of those squares and move um four that way so what this actually what this kind of allows is you can actually play um so you can this this would add a bit more like naturalism to games like blood bowl where which allows diagonal movement and also to advance hero quest which um doesn't allow diagonal movement you can just apply this two squares for one square rule and you get a slightly more natural naturalistic kind of movement what it would also allow is you to play um tabletop battles, battle games like Saga or um, Warcry or and you could play them on a grid instead of using you wouldn't need to use tape measures to measure range and there'd be none of this, these uh, these arguments about um, is he in range, is he not in range, can you move that far, can you not move that far 
because it's all done on a grid so it's either he's either in range or he's not in range by applying this rule the rule kind of is based on the the old three four five triangle which is a right the right angle triangle so if you move along one of the uh, cardinal axes and you move your maximum movement of say five you can go all the way to there but by if you if you take it one back and you've only moved four you have the situation where the triangle is on its uh, side here and you get these extra sort of sideways movement squares for free because you've sacrificed one along the cardinal axis and this is what the this is let's let's just trace that triangle. So if, this is my starting point. This is where I end up if I move uh, if I move along the cardinal axis. And if I move one space less along the cardinal axis, I'm allowed to move up to two sideways. 